You are listening to Gorgas, you idiot. All right, now we can start. I was too enthusiastic. You were so ready to just jump into it, dude. Sawyer, hi. What's up? Thank you for coming on the podcast. Yeah, thanks for having me. Of course. Uh, For people that don't know who you are, you're Sawyer Lewis. You Mm -hmm. are the other half, the integral half of Leroy and Lewis. Mm -hmm. Um, I wanted to have you on here for a lot of reasons, Mm -hmm. but uh, one of them was just because I feel like uh, you don't get enough spotlight. You know what I'm saying? Thank you. I don't know. I feel like that's by choice, though, right? Yeah, a little bit. I don't know. I'm, I'm like painfully, I guess, I struggle a little bit with like this balance of feeling incredibly non photogenic and like overly self conscious Mm -hmm. in some ways. So, in regards to like the media stuff, I'm not natural. Like, actually, I am naturally a performer, but I'm not so. I guess inclined to be the spot, like to be in the spotlight okay. these days. At least. What do you mean you're naturally a performer? Are you are you a I theater was like kid? A hardcore theater. Kid. No way. Okay, yeah. I guess. Wait a minute. Now it all makes yeah. sense with yeah. the outfit and everything. Yeah. <laughs> I can see this. Yeah, I. Do you uh, need to fix your headphones? Yeah, I'm they're sorry. Not falling? It's okay. Just, let me get comfortable here. Here, do it. Do a new one. Yeah, push okay. the. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Boom. Am are I they good? secure? Am yeah. No, no, you're totally okay. good. No, much more comfortable. Um. Yeah, it's funny because I was actually meeting with an old friend earlier and we were talking about, you know, I very rarely relive my childhood on a daily basis, but I was definitely like a hardcore theater kid. Okay. So. What kind of, what plays were you in? Because no, I was a I little mean, bit of a theater kid too. Oh, that I have that play. in my in my, my I was repertoire. like a child star in my what? small town. Yeah, I was like, like a, really into community theater. I was like, well, I was in Little Orphan Annie when I was like oh, nine. Yeah, and the it was perfect a, Little Orphan Annie. Yeah, it was very And intense. you sang all the parts? Oh, yeah. What? So yeah. you got pipes on you too? I mean, I specifically did when I was nine. The sun will come out. Oh, yeah. And then, I mean, I was That's just awesome. like really into it. I yeah. was like... I love, also, I'm from a small town, which sucks. Like, there's nothing to do there. It's super isolated. Where? What town? Uh, San Angelo, Texas. Sorry okay. for the lovers of San Angelo in the world. But it's very isolated. There's not a lot to do. Um, but the arts there are pretty good because the people, you know, there is a small kind of community of people that like to do interesting, creative things there. So, the, like, the arts in San Angelo are notable. And it was a nice outlet for me growing up. Right. You know, to find like minded, kind of interesting, quirky, quirky fun. That's how people. I feel about going to the open mics too. It's yeah, like the oh same yeah. Thing. It's like totally. it's I mean, kind it's of like the even weirder. It's the grown up degenerate version of the theater kid. I'm sure. Like cafeteria hangout. Yeah. That's what it feels like. I you go back imagine. there and like wait for your spot and you're like, Who's he who which table can I sit at? Oh no, totally. Like, so oh I see I, I don't I couldn't do that though. There's what? Like you so did much... you did theater, but you can't yeah, you couldn't do comedy? I think unless now, it was written. Well I'm not funny. By any means. Mm. I mean, I think I'm funny, but I know I'm not. Uh, <laughs> I don't know Also, they're that. just, you have to have such a thick skin. Yeah. Which is also one of the things that I'm, as I've gotten older, when you're nine and you're just like shameless about mm-hmm. things. I was like, I was not shy as a child. But as I've gotten older, I think I've gotten more self-conscious and more, I guess. As you've gotten older, you've yes, gotten more self-conscious? Yeah, I think like just tougher on myself. Hmm. I'm also kind of a, a perfectionist. So okay. in regards to becoming an adult, I, th- I think I just had taken, I just take it all more seriously. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know. I like how just people like, look at me or whatever, yeah, exactly. especially when you're like a community figure now with the, with the restaurant, that. like how's the public, how's the, how's, you know, Well, and now I just have a lot of shit to do. Yeah. So I also just like being on like Evan, in the beginning, when he started all the media stuff specifically, he was really passionate about it. And I was really confused about how it was going to go. And so it's really been his project. And I'm happy to allow it to be his project and him to be excited mm-hmm. about it and take ownership of it. And I certainly like don't want him to come and tell me what to do when some things are my thing. So, right. Yeah. We'll get into that, too. I have yeah. that written down. Like, I guess we could just jump into that. So, like, one of the things I wrote down I wanted to talk to you about, and this is something that I think is super important if there's any small business people like or people that want to like start a small business because I've dealt with um, similar instances where there's like division of responsibility and stuff. Very much, And yeah. that is like a super, I feel like necessary thing where like a lot of people want to, you know, when you're starting a business from the ground up, there's, there's, it's like a all hands on deck. It's mm-hmm. how it feels sometimes or how it Absolutely, is sometimes. Yeah. But then, but then there's certain areas where it's like you should try to like 
sit down with the operating agreement or whatever and iron out like who's going to do who's going to be responsible for what mm -hmm. and then kind of like whose final decision on certain things you yeah know, who has final say on certain things so it's like how does that work for you guys and like how important how important do you think it's that kind is of to natural success? for us yeah it um, seems that way we're pretty like evan and i specifically have pretty different we're different we're very different and we're also alike we have very similar values we have i think similar work ethics we have similar goals but in regards to our personalities we're pretty different and we have definitely like very different backgrounds and skill sets so naturally we tend to gravitate towards tasks that we enjoy doing or are good at or efficient at doing because we also only have so much fucking time right um and now we have kids so it's even harder um to find time so sometimes it's just like we do what we're good at we do what we like to do mm -hmm. and it tends to kind of work out and then there are there's some like gray area there's some things that kind of we ha that have to get done yeah. that we'll take turns doing um like what like hit well for example okay his and also his tasks are very clear like he does all the food stuff and does a lot of the media stuff mm -hmm. there's all everything else i pretty much do <laughs> so everything what does else. that entail for people that don't know okay you know so we mean? do own a barbecue uh food truck yeah. we have another food truck called mama fried we have um, a commissary kitchen we have about 15 employees 20 employees um so and you're opening a brick and mortar we're now. opening a giant brick and mortar in february Woo! very exciting yeah so currently we also have our spouses are also equal partners in our company oh so, they are okay, yeah I didn't know so that. nathan is also my husband nathan lewis is also a key figure he works for us full time and he is also an equal partner and Lindsay, uh evan's wife uh does all our pr and is very much like strategically involved in a lot of stuff mm -hmm. um they have their own specific responsibilities but i'd say that that's kind of the, some of the gray area they end up handling taking up a okay. lot of the like taking on a lot of the gray area stuff and nathan and i specifically kind of share a lot of responsibilities okay. which is trickier yeah so you handle the finances the fine and I, I mean i do most of the hiring um i definitely manage the team mm -hmm. um i do all the scheduling i do all of the payroll manage the finances at one point <sighs> i did all like the ordering of all of the supplies and stuff Jeez. We, I, we do catering uh -huh. manage all of the catering that's so um, crazy. do a lot of events we used to produce a lot of events now we're we don't do as much because because we're busy mm -hmm. maybe like, that'll happen again with the new spot yeah right? for sure and we'll we'll kind of grow into that and mm -hmm. we'll grow into a lot of different revenue centers within the space and uh right now in the entrepreneurial stage of all of it of the brick and mortar um like nathan and i kind of led the financing which is super hard yeah like getting Shittiest people to give you part money of it, for sure yeah, exactly um and then the legal stuff and the now we're both like taking turns managing the project so when like evan makes like a new recipe idea or something mm -hmm. right that's like fully his role basically right totally and i'm not really involved in any of that stuff besides you don't ever like you don't ever go hey what if we did this and he's yeah. like oh and he like makes an idea. do yeah. you have anything on the, the on the kind of that comes the to mind hard way to not do that oh, okay because sometimes and i'm sure he'll listen to this and this with evan you kind of have to like make him think it's his idea <laughs> If you want. I think that's what that's with most uh, like I feel creative, like a creative like, yeah, people yeah totally and I mean he's like he me included he's like stubborn in a way that's been really helpful in regards to longevity okay. like he's creative um, and he is flexible especially when it makes sense or like we have to make a transition mm -hmm. but you know he was really stubborn in the beginning of like we're only doing brisket on saturdays and everyone was like yeah. what the fuck are you doing like that you're missing an opportunity to sell food to people but it ended up kind of like oh, stirring totally up a, it stirred up a bunch of shit about you guys being the barbecue place that yeah doesn't serve brisket all all week and exactly. then and then people are like well what the hell are they serving then i'm gonna go see totally right? yeah and it's then, been a um it was an investment in a long-term vision yeah and it's been very powerful. Oh, yeah, for and sure. And it's important because we don't need to serve any more fucking briskets. Like, you can have every, so yeah. it, there's brisket on you can every. You go to Terry Black's. You can probably go across the street to the gas station and find some brisket. Probably. You know? Yeah. So it's everywhere here. So when Evan makes like a food idea, does he then come to you and it's like, how can we, can we make this like, make like a profitable, 
menu item mm, or we like just kind of try it out okay there's a lot of trial and error that goes into it um and then we like kind of look at data over a period of time okay um i wish it was a little bit more structured and maybe someday it will be but it's always we've always kind of like maybe that's kind of part of the magic though yeah and you I mean, know what it, i mean you gotta works. try stuff yeah. and and Evan's really good at that. I would say that that's way you don't stick power. something on the menu, buy a bunch of shit mm -hmm. for it, and then nobody then wants work. it, right? Yeah. Well, and sometimes it does happen, and yeah. people don't want it, and then we just take it off. For sure. So we, until we get, we kind of get down the road with something and see if it hits. Right. Sometimes. Um, so how did you guys, a get like, hooked up together, mm -hmm. and then b like realize like oh if like you do your thing and i do my thing then we'll have this thing right honestly it's kind of magic did I it don't just kind of kind of worked out i mean i'd say that we're but i am very relentless like i'm pretty like we're gonna do this thing we said we're gonna do it we're gonna fucking do it no matter what yeah. we're gonna kill ourselves we're gonna make it work mm -hmm. so we were both very I mean, we've all been our whole team for the most part has been incredibly like immersed and committed to the project it's the pretty beginning. crazy honestly yeah i'm super proud of that i'd say that's probably the thing that i'm the most proud of is like building a team of people that really likes what they do or at least it's a good i mean it's good for people in, in a bunch of different ways yeah um but yeah we so Nathan and I went to UT. That's where we met. Okay. A lot of Evan grew up in Austin. So you guys are tech Austin Austin natives, basically. Or you're not. not you're from, from San Angelo. Yeah, I'm from San Angelo, yeah. which is three hours west of here. Okay. Um, but basically, like, kind of came of age in Austin, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Went um, to college. Went and to stuff. college. Met a bunch of cool people for the first time here. Um, they were very like minded, and a lot of those people that I met in college that are still my good friends are friends with evan from high school because oh, okay. evan went to high school here so there's all this weird small town like big small town stuff yeah yeah um but sarah yeah. thought you guys were related until thanksgiving oh, that's funny yeah and you're like no yeah no we're not <laughs> people also because i'm a woman they just assume that it's weird to have a woman that's not married to, you. to the right. yeah so it's weird that you know we're, we're two families that are in business together but when it's evan and i highlighted people are always confused that mm -hmm. we're not married interesting that's a yeah. weird stigma you know it is a weird stigma i mean honestly i think that's another thing you wouldn't like, think that about two dudes that were doing owning a barbecue stop <laughs> no you, you don't wouldn't. think you that about burnt bean right they're normal yeah <laughs> um but being a woman in barbecue also is like just, just like always surprising to people yeah and the fact that i don't cook the barbecue is also surprising to people there's a lot of reasons that i'm not highlighted all the time sure and i'm fine with it that's not why i do it yeah back but, to full full circle yeah but how did so how did you guys say hey here's an idea and then like how did it like how did that evolve how did that conversation come up that like so evan was working Actually, at friedman's yeah he was working at friedman's i'd always worked in restaurants i've always worked okay. in restaurants i've always done other stuff too what'd you do um, in the restaurant so i will literally have done everything in a restaurant okay um i've always done i've always been front of house i like always was a server growing like when i was young um moved into management when i in my probably late 20s mm -hmm. kind of like committed to the restaurant industry worked in some really like structured fine dining spots learned a lot we lived in colorado for a while and i was really um kind of influenced positively by these people that i was working with there they were all kind of from all over they were all very smart and charismatic and interested in wine or beer or mm -hmm. uh, where their food came from so and their passion kind of inspired exactly. you a little bit right because when i like in college also when i mean i'm old now so at that time i worked in restaurants here and there wasn't really a scene here um i worked in restaurants to make money it's hard and to think about an Austin without a food scene. It did not. I mean, there was like fine. There was like fine dining Mexican places like Z Tejas or these other places that don't really exist now are like kind uh -huh. of f fade away. Um, but so people would go out, but the town wasn't very big, and there certainly wasn't like a foodie scene. Right. Um, so when we moved to Colorado after college, there was kind of a foodie scene that's still there. It hasn't like in massively like, yeah. changed, but in Boulder? the same way that yes, in Boulder, in yeah. the same way that like it Portland. probably is important yeah. like they've known where their food comes from forever it was it's like part of the their daily life not like right. some trendy thing right and that's kind of a thing that you guys push is like we're local you yeah. know to texas yeah. and it's like some but, but prior to this 
craze here you know with the food the foodie yeah. scene growing there wasn't a lot of like farm no, to table stuff about that. In, yeah. the, in the barbie world people still don't really care about it yeah they just don't know yeah right? but they like, don't think about it they just don't think yeah about it doesn't it. well it's also important to me like if we're gonna make our livelihood off of selling animals it's nice to know where they're coming from yeah and we've all seen those documentaries it's disgusting. the yeah. the industry is crazy that industry is crazy it almost almost is enough to make me want to yeah. go to the dark side and be a, a, a vegan too. or something when I watch that stuff. And then I'm like, well, I'll just support the friendly farmers, you know, it's, it's an uphill battle. Kind of I'll just, that's compromise. a good way to, yeah, it's a good sure. way to sleep at night. So, you yeah, know, <laughs> I mean, it is so extreme. Just so don't gross. buy Oscar Mayer shit. Ugh, you know gross. what I mean? Yeah. I don't, I can't even eat that shit anymore. So you guys were like, we're going to do, let's do a local. I'm just curious how yeah, and when the conversation kind of okay, comes well, about. Okay. Well, so actually we talked about doing a brew pub because my husband's a brewer by oh, trade right. yeah um so we always wanted to open up a brew pub that also served barbecue like farm to table barbecue mm-hmm. um, still hasn't really been done well or at well, all because right? it's almost impossible really we tried to open a brewery for like and this barbecue spot for like five years in kyle years. right well everywhere we yeah. had like six spots oh shit we had signed a lease pre-covid oh my god and then we had to back out like our lease was supposed to commence may of 2020 so it was it all it all worked out why is it impossible why is it impossible just the zoning and like the stuff you need to have the pits and the big brewery things well weird so it has to be like very flexible zoning okay to do both because you're manufacturing you're manufacturing alcohol and you're doing a restaurant and yes so it has to be very flexible not only that you need enough space that's industrial enough to do that stuff right and most of the space in Austin, three, that is three million dollars now, oh, just, it's just like, for the land, yeah, and then you, you got to really build your warehouse it. on it. Yeah, you can't really finance it. Um, so it's been tough. So but you, you guys want to compromise yeah. on a on a building with with a bar without the brewery? And Nathan seems like he's okay with that for now. And we'll find you sure. know down the road if we want to do that, we can. You could always do, do it too. outside and then like only sell it at Leroy totally and or and something that's, that's like that, or at the brewery the or Leroy and you know special beer yeah. at Leroy. That would be kind of fun. Yeah, but now like the brewery, the brewing industry is kind of taking a dip. So it right. might have all worked out. Yeah, that we're not doing it. Yeah. I mean, yeah, the brewery thing, I feel like I've seen it come in so many waves for coming yeah. from Portland. Oh, like, my God, I'm sure. If you open a brewery in Portland, like, nobody could give less of a shit right now. You know what I mean? And then, well, they've been and, doing it forever. Yeah, and the ones that are, like, cemented in, like, the bridge ports and the yeah. bur- break sides and, mm-hmm. like, these big companies out there, the tin barrel, you know? Yeah. They, all that beer, everyone kind of agrees, like, that beer sucks. Because it's like the first, that's the first wave of yeah. craft beer. That's mm-hmm. like your, if you're going to put it in barbecue terms, that's like your uh, Franklin's or like your, he doesn't suck, right? But like that's your, that's like your, uh, maybe more like your Lockhart bar or like yeah. whatever, you know, yeah. the people that kind of started the wave, right? Yeah. And then, so now there's all this like new little stuff that people mm-hmm. locally like. And I'm like, how do these big guys even stay in business from the tourists that don't know anything about totally. beer? They're like, I heard you got to go to, because they have all these lists in Portland. That's like the top 10 breweries. Sure. And it's always been those same. 10 that have been on there since i was a kid you know what i mean yeah. but yeah it's really definitely you guys dodged well a bullet right there i think yeah maybe we'll you'd see. be better off making seltzers or something Dude, right? well, now, <laughs> and that's the thing so um nathan also is a smart guy and he very much watched like watches alcohol trends mm-hmm. and like there's a lot of information that's published out there about like what people are drinking and it seems like according to the data the young people are now like there's a whole movement of young people that don't drink yeah. or are very Which, like uh, i support that yeah that's cool i mean i wasn't one of them but <laughs> i i support them for sure i mean i would like them to come and spend money though with us if yeah. you know if we're wor- if we're working towards longevity then we have to create something that's gonna kind of like grow and mature with the demographic around us right so i don't know we'll see but canned I, canned cocktails or something yeah do, well <laughs> yeah so they're they're drinking more people are drinking more wine i think beers but beer is kind of like flatlining right yeah, it's people people get their beers that they like, and then that's the beer that they like, right? Yeah. It seems like there's a it's like a special like sp- like smaller demographic niche that like wants to try all the different beers, right? Well, and I think that that was shoved in their face for so long, and now and like it also half of those beers, like you were saying, the beers that are like the fruity, fucking sour, weird right. beers are not actually very good. Yeah, and it's they give you too much of a hangover and yeah. stuff. It's weird. You guys, yeah. you guys definitely dodged a bullet. So I'm sorry. I I always kind of jump around, but I try oh, to have too. a good sorry. job. I try to have a good job of remembering what we we're talking about and I'm how we really, got here. I'm really um, um like take a. No, it's good. I like that. No, I love that. That's what that's 
it's the nice thing about this podcast is it's just long form and we're just chilling. So, cool. um, but so you guys want to start a brew pub? Oh yes, sorry. that Back doesn't to work that out. Question. It's okay. It's my um, fault. But that's how it really all we like got together. So Nathan okay. and Evan started the conversation, and I then I'm kind of the doer. You're the you're the guy. Okay, guys, how are we gonna do, do this it. for yes. real? And then they're like, "What if we did this and that?" And you're like. We can't realistically do that. Do you? Yeah. Do you well, have to well, and then it was like, okay, let's just grow into it. So we mm -hmm. started a food truck on kind of a whim, and we thought it was going to be just kind of like a test kitchen slash way to kind of get our foot in the door. Evan needed a, Evan needed to make a move, and he was ready to do his own thing. And I think he knew that he needed like it was a good idea to have somebody someone, that some badass behind the scenes kind of like hopefully someone that could he could trust to keep the wheels on the truck yeah so to speak so. that's awesome well it really worked out it glad did. you it guys really did took, it took the truck whole, the whole truck thing has really taken a whole like while it's been a wild ride yeah it has been it's had a life of its own can you explain to people like i guess how big a deal it is that you guys are as successful as you've been in the truck you mm -hmm. know whereas like and maybe a, a quick explanation of like the list you know yeah, what I mean? It, for yeah. people that aren't from sure. Texas and don't understand the gravity of yeah, the list. Yeah, and I honestly didn't really understand it either. Okay. Um, so there's a lot of press in the world. There's a lot of, we all know, we read lists about, mm -hmm. like you were mentioning earlier, of all the best breweries to go to or whatever. There's a lot of lists, and some of that's just fabricated bullshit. A lot of that's like... Somebody's opinion. Yeah. yeah, somebody's opinion. Or honestly, it's like they have a good PR person that pays the right, right. people or yeah. knows the right people, people to get... People don't think about that. They don't. And that's actually like one of the hardest things for for business owners that don't know about it they kind of get like lost some of them get lost in the shuffle because they're just like hoping for some organic press that they right. never get yeah because you need a pr person mm -hmm. you need a Lindsay. yes a Lindsay so that's Leroy. Lindsay's job. <laughs> um so we were in a good spot that they were like Lindsay and evan both are very well connected within that world mm -hmm. naturally um so yeah there's all of that um but the Texas Monthly List, which comes out every four years, is very much grounded in science or like a like in a way that like they send out a lot of different people over a period of time anonymously that collect data on their experience. It's a well controlled study. Exactly. Okay. It's, I guess yes, that's the better way to I put it. I don't think I ever knew that myself either, to be honest. Yeah. I, I know like, Daniel Vaughn is the guy, but Yeah, he's kinda like the last like he's he, the he's last gonna sign sift. off. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's the, the one sifter. that makes. I'm sure he kind of breaks down the like top ten. He's got an Excel spreadsheet that he pulls yeah. up like Minority Honestly, Report maybe. everywhere yeah. on like a VR goggles, and he's like, no, uh, uh, you know, Leroy and Lewis over here. And well, and I think there's also like, oh, that's a good story. They kind of have a good brand and a good story, <laughs> right. and all that all stuff. plays into it. I'm sure, um, but I think at the end of the day, it is very calculated it's rooted in 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 variables that matter yeah yeah as compared to just one person's opinion right um so yeah we were the f like so texas monthly puts out this list every four years and it is a list of 50 barbecue joints in texas they're the top 50 barbecue joints and then the top 10 are ranked one through ten and we were number five which is a big deal we were the only honestly i think we're probably the highest ranking food truck maybe ever on the list yeah like i think I that's know. the i think that's the yeah. i think that's the goal that, or that's yeah. the uh that's the trophy that you guys yeah hold, I, I think, think so i mean our franklin obviously was a food truck at one point right but i'm not and i'm not sure how that technically works but in recent yeah. years yeah, yeah uh it's been good so so you we guys, see a lot of people that come right. through that are like diehard barbecue texas people that what they go to every every place on the list and experience it and they rank it in their head and it's this whole cultural barbecue thing that i am not super like i'm not super steeped in that culture i'm just right. more like i'm i'm more like food like i you know i worked in hospitality for 20 years i love food i love all different types of food right i'm newly entrenched in this barbecue scene which i'm still like getting to know mm -hmm. um and do it you, is very welcoming do you but. get do you ever get some like you ever get weird like uh haters or any or like weird side eye because you're not like a barbecue person i mean but I'm you're sure like people in talk one of the you're like me, in but. your your part a partner and important piece of one of the best barbecue spots and I'm i mean really sure. if you're on the top five in the in the state 
you yeah. you're in the top five in the country in the yeah. world pretty much i mean yeah. this is the episode yeah, of the barbecue so. so it's kind of like a weird yeah. thing where you're like oh this is kind of a big deal oh this is a oh this yeah. is a oh shit yeah this is, is a, a big, big deal, deal. Yeah. it's kind of like a slow build where you like realize and then so when you guys got that list spot you the truck must have got it was very ravaged busy. right it was very very busy and i guess one of the things i was gonna say in addition to the list being like based in something that feels real and it's such a rarely published list that it feels very special and people look forward to it every four years um that people really come out for this list right they anticipate it they like rank all their favorites they, there's a lot of speculation around it there's a lot of opinions i think people really show up yeah right it actually matters it can like kind of change the life of your business right like i know john bates's life has changed yeah yeah we're gonna get him in here too to talk about it but yeah absolutely yeah. absolutely so it's especially top five top ten yeah if you can so get too. the get that top slot one yeah. of those top ten slots you're you better be ready for like to be a, busy. were you guys ready like yeah okay we kind of knew what did you guys do to prep you kind of knew just you just knew because you were knew. putting out good I don't know. We, food or? yeah well we got you kind of hear there's oh, speculation there's murmurs. well because they come out and take photos <laughs> They don't tell you what number you are, but, but you know on. if you make top 10, then you're going to get like a special feature and they take even more oh. photos. Mm. And then, you know, there's some, we kind of knew. Sure. Um, and like, also, I think Daniel kind of tells you like, you need to yeah. be ready. It's yeah. going to be crazy. Damn. Um, so yeah, it's been great. But yeah, I, I mean, we were very successful in the fact that we attract a lot of great talent, you know, like we have people that move all over from all over to come and work with us, which yeah. is very special. I feel like you guys really pay attention to that. Like the people that work for you are the ones that kind of oh make you, they kind of make your, they kind of make your brain, you know, they make They're your the business what it is. I They're mean, like the, like the people that you hire, just generally speaking, though, like the people that you hire are going to be the ones that kind of can take you to that next level. Oh, if you build, because people, people were around all the time. So right. our quality of life is like directly affected by the wonderful people or the shitty people we have around so absolutely i think it's the most important thing because you see that a lot i feel like with restaurants where like it's like this guy's restaurant right and yeah. it's all on this guy and like anyone who works there c could kind of just be replaced you know what i mean yeah. and, and then yeah. those businesses i mean i guess they're they they can be successful but it's like you know, it doesn't. There's some. There's some kind of feeling in the food. I think when there's like, uh, yeah, or in the product, whatever mm -hmm. that might be. You know what I mean? When your totally. when your staff is built out with people that you care about that are kind of integral to your. Oh, I love it. I yeah. mean, that's my favorite part of the job. Yeah, is building a team and like spending time with them and making sure they have a good quality of life. So when you guys got the list spot, you, what were some of the like struggles that you guys had to deal with when when Honestly, you got hit really hard? I can't even remember. I think we were ready for it. Like okay. not having money is the biggest struggle in the world. Like not right. having enough money and not having enough income to run your business is really the biggest stressor for me personally. So when you saw those dollar signs I mean, going up, having from the list, opportunity you're like, Let's go. is like something that like we can solve any problem, but you can't. Like it's really hard to solve the problem of bringing more people to come eat. Right. So like that for me, it was great. It's really changed the life of our business. And then the next year, at the same time, somebody feed Phil. Which is on Netflix. Oh yeah, came out, and, and that's that the guy. Who is that guy again? He's the guy um, that actually wrote. Like I think he's the producer and like inspiration behind Everybody Loves Raymond, and he had like his own PBS show. It's like okay, a yeah, funny, yeah. silly food. Oh show. yeah, he's like a Jerry Seinfeld crew. He's one of those. He's like friends with all those yeah. guys, right? Yeah. Larry David and all that. Yeah. Okay. Um, he's really nice. Sweet. His show actually has a really good following. I think it's like grown. It's pretty well produced now. Mm -hmm. uh, he just comes by and eats and reacts yeah, and to talks the food. And like, he, like they're cool. very familiar and they have kind of. It's really just stick. like a travel food show, exactly. Basically, right? It's like kind of filled the void of like a Bourdain esque mm. show. Rest in without peace being to the very, goat. With being very different. Yeah. Like he knew. Like I actually talked to him about it, because um, I'm a huge. Bourdain fan. I love Anthony Bourdain. Um, I miss him like he was too. a good friend of mine. Me too. And I Actually, never, never he, knew him. When you know? he died, the day the day he died, I called Nathan, just like bawling. Like I think I cried too. I think I teared up. And Nathan was like, "Did someone in your family die?" Like he us literally, literally thought like someone. I <laughs> you were just in Ottawa. Yeah, seriously. And he's like, "Oh my god." Oh my. I was totally scared. I mean, that sucks. But yeah, thank God, no one in our right nuclear family is dead. 
Jeez. But yeah, um, so this kind of fills that void. And he was like, you know, he's never, you're never going to find anyone that is no, Bourdain. No. Like, no, no, we don't need any more Bourdain copycats. No. So, like, let me do something different and just be authentic. Just be funny. So, and but that show, the reach of that show is huge. It's yeah. Like, you know, we get people from all over the world. To people come will to touch eat. down at the airport and and take an Uber to Leroy and Lewis. They will. It's pretty it crazy. It happens. A that's lot. awesome. So, that's also been very powerful. But yeah, we do we do pretty great when we're busy. We kind of rock it out. I mean, yeah. we have to figure out the dynamic of the line, and obviously we have a lot of limitations considering we are working out of a truck. Mm-hmm. So there's not a lot of space. There's not a lot of storage. There's always shit to deal with. But yeah. we're pretty good at that at this point. What's uh what's the like? What's the the scariest thing going into, or some of the scariest God, things so going in, going into the brick and mortar? I'm sorry to bring no, it up. No, I'm so excited. No, it's actually. I've, I mean, I'm living. It's in a so world exciting. Of- These people don't even get to know. For people that don't know too, I do. I do some work for you guys, mm-hmm. and it looks like I might be doing some more now yeah, that we're doing so get moving into the brick and mortar, some new digs, yeah. and I, we just can't wait to show you guys it's what we've been working I'm on so here excited. behind this. What yeah. they've been working on yeah. really, but I yeah. consider myself part of the team. Hell I got yeah, my first T-shirt. I got my first T-shirt today. We're so happy to have you a part of the team. I love being a part but of the yeah, team. Um, this is a very biased podcast. I don't care. Oh yeah. <laughs> no haters. Leroy and Lewis is the best. It's the best barbecue. <laughs> no. Uh, oh yeah. Um, well, you know, I love what we do, and I really believe in what we do, which I think makes it work. Like yeah. if I was just like, yeah, it's fine. No, I, I we live and breathe what we do. Right. It's very important to us. We believe in every product we put out for the most part. And if we don't, it probably doesn't stick around. And yeah. you guys work really hard too, but you, you have fun with the well, food and like with the, pro- you know what I mean? Like yeah. and I, th- I think that's a, like Evan has fun with the food, right? Yeah. And so it's like the ev- everybody can see and feel and taste that you know what yeah. I mean? Well, it's hard work. It's like really hard and kind of sucks right. sometimes. Like the you're talking to thousands of people a day. You're having a lot of mo- like, you know, the same interactions. You're doing hot work. You're doing heavy work. You're doing dirty work. So you have to have fun in order to make it worth it. Right. Like you have to. We, we do fun parties. We do events where we highlight other people. We do a lot of collab. We used to do a lot of collaborations, but we try to have fun because like, that's why we do this. Right. We don't, we're not doing this because we're making a lot of money. We're right. doing this because it, we want to do it. It's like if you wanted to make a lot of money, you'd franchise a fast food joint or something. Or not or, even that. Yeah. I don't even know what I would do. Or you do. would do something Actually, other yeah. than food. Oh, that's another thing I want to talk to you yeah. about. Wait, real quick. I'm going to remember that. Yeah. I have it written down, but uh, um, uh, we were, I was trying to ask what um, what you are, what are things are scaring you the most about oh, yes. the brick and mortar. We keep doing this. Yeah, it's okay. Um, that means we're having fun. Yeah. <laughs> um, the things that are scaring me the most. Well, it's always going to be interesting to see who we actually can hire in the beginning. Because like- yeah. I, we haven't had a lot of trouble hiring people recently, but we don't hire very often. And we usually hire from kind of like a subset of people that are already kind of entrenched or like fans of Friends or family. Yeah. And yeah. So How are you going to do it different this time? We're just going to have to hire more of them. Yeah. So, and we're going to have to hire a bunch of people at once. <sighs> or and like train over them a all. couple. Yeah. Hope they can absorb. And yeah. So I have a lot of friends and connections that are excited to come and be a part of it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm also just kind of... You kind of just have to be like, we're hiring people and see who, see who shows up. And, and who sticks around and who's good yeah, and who sucks. Yeah, exactly. And, and sometimes, I, most of the time when you open up a new spot, you're going to get a bunch of riffraff and then they're going to weed themselves out. Right. So that'll be a challenge. I mean, just all working in the same building and kind of getting the dynamic of a new space is always kind of a challenging thing. You know, like we have a bunch of different stuff going on. Like we'll be managing the bar. We'll have a barbecue line. We'll also kind of have this fast, casual, like, window where people can order food from the bar and then pick it up. But That's yeah. cool. So you don't have to kind of wait in the big barbecue yeah, line. Yeah, I mean, there'll be, they'll, I mean, it'll be a limited selection of things. Mm-hmm. But um, ideally, you'll be able to always come and have something to eat. So you, got, you guys are going to have to basically increase the volume of, like, how much yeah. food you're ordering. So you're going to have yeah. to – it's the classic spend money to make money kind of thing, totally. right? Totally. Yep. I mean, it's a lot of, you know, spending money to bring in more inventory, learning how to prep in right. volume, which we already kind of do. I mean, we're, like, shooting to, like, double kind of what we do, which maybe not even that. 
Which you might end up doing more than that, right? We might. I mean, I think those are like conservative numbers. Mm -hmm. I think just like having multiple dynamics in the same building. There's a retail space. Eventually, there's an event kind of area that we'll start doing events in. I'm excited to kind of bring on more and more. But you just kind of have to take one thing at a time with something that big and crazy, right? Totally, yeah. So So what was the first? What's like the first thing? It's like getting the money, right? Or getting this? Do you have to get the money before you find the space, or is it kind of a weird happens at the same time? It's both, yes. And that's always an interesting thing for people to overcome is like you need the money and you need the space, but you can't really commit to either until both work out. (laughs) It's such an impossible. I think I remember having to do the same thing when we did the grow yeah. up thing back in the day yeah well and i mean we failed a couple times at trying to make it all work because the timing just didn't work out right with covid and everything yeah and, and i mean like, how long has this been in the works forever i yeah. mean since the beginning yeah uh, we have i mean we signed we've probably signed four lease like what do they call them? Uh, a okay. letter of letter intent, intent kind of thing yeah, yeah. we signed four letters of intent on four or five different spaces that's so annoying also the city of austin is very hard to develop mm-hmm. so a lot of, red, a tape lot of stuff. red tape there's a lot of like if it's not zoned appropriately or if it's not the building isn't you don't have a site plan then you have to like do a bunch of shit that takes a long time so we were avoiding a lot of that i mean we've learned a lot yeah yeah we've come a long way where it, can you talk about where it's where it is yet or mm-hmm. can yeah do people is that public knowledge yeah i'm happy to talk about it yeah where Get where in there. town is it for people that are like it's local it's south austin it's like so it's south of ben white at um stasney and emerald forest and emerald forest is kind of between manchac and it's like pretty close to south first is there a reason you guys picked that area, or is it just whatever you guys could get your hands on, um, really, or a mixture? To be honest, we all kind of lived down there. Oh, we yeah, operate, okay. Like, I lived down Sweet. there. Nathan, Nathan and I lived down there. Uh, Evan and Lindsay live very close to there. Our, commis- our current commissary kitchen is down there. It's also a neighborhood that is vastly populated mm-hmm. and underserved. Yeah, I was going to say, it seems like a lot of those, like, north and south and east and west of the of the downtown yeah. proper, it seems like there's so much people, but then you go out there, you know, uh, so many people live in there, and then you go out there and, like, your choices are Chick-fil-A and, Definitely. you know what I mean? Kind of yeah, like your run-of-the-mill like, Jersey grid. Mike's and totally. whatever. There's not, like, a big... Or maybe, like, somebody gets big enough, they uh, like a Terry Black, somebody big, like, can, sure. can afford oh, like to a, open the space, location, right? But, like, a yeah. cool restaurant? Yeah. Like, the, a, there's hip, only a, a hip, trendy, a, tr- a foodie restaurant? It's like, yeah, not yeah. a lot of stuff out there. Yeah, there's a lot of Mexican food, and I eat that a lot mm-hmm. down there. Um, there's a couple, there's some bars. If you go far enough down south, there's like that strip of bars. Mm-hmm. Chicken fingers and yeah, exactly. Yeah, bar food. Um, but in regards to like having a family friendly day to night experience, yeah. it feels relevant and kind of community oriented. There's not a lot. So I think people are really itching for it. Big space, big seating. Yep. Um, it is a big space. It's I think it's like five thousand square feet. We maybe. were talking about this at Thanksgiving. I think yeah. about how many seats it was going to yes. hold, and then somebody said one one thing, and somebody was like, yeah. "What? That many?" Yeah. So it's compartmentalized in a kind of unique way. It's a kind of a wraparound space. Okay. So like one side of the building is the restaurant, one side is like technically like a retail area, and then another like retail and office area. But we're opening it up, so we're doing seating in all of them. But you can kind of compartmentalize the seating if you want. What does that mean I'm for a, sure. a dummy? I don't know. Um, so let's say you go to a huge restaurant that's like an industrial sized brewery or something mm-hmm. like that, and you're the only people in there. You're like, this feels fucking empty. Oh, or yeah. you go to a place like, for example, Armadillo Den, right. which where we all have our other food truck. That place can fit like a thousand people. Right. It looks like an amphitheater almost. Yeah. But when it has like 300 people, it feels empty because mm-hmm. it's so big, so vast. And you're like, there's 300 people here. This is not a slow night. Right. It just feels slow. Yeah. Um, there, the spaces will fill, like will feel full. When it's not. When it's not. Nice. And at the same time, there's more space to kind of open up for people. Right. So it okay. will feel cozy. Do you, can you guys like pull a curtain or something? We're going to work on a curtain. But That's yeah, cool. there's like the, the spaces are compartmentalized in a way that you, once you see it, you'll know what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. Yeah. yeah, I've only seen it once when it was just plywood and concrete, yeah. Yeah. which was still cool. Yeah. I was like, oh. Yeah, now there's walls and stuff. That's cool. So, you guys yeah. have four walls. It's no, not, there's not a lot be... of walls, I hope. So the food truck is will stay where it's at forever. The food truck will stay. It's actually now a trailer. We did. Oh, upgrade. it's not. We we've s- upgraded. We've upgraded that like lovely piece of shit. Our <laughs> old food truck. 
um had nightmares cleaning that thing for seven years we bought a trailer and like it was new and it's we, sexy it's nice it's, it's got so good lighting in it for clean. me to do camera stuff yeah it's, it's so fun. much easier to clean there's more storage space it's nice so it's now awesome. we have a trailer at cosmic and it will stay there has that increased the like uh your ability to crank food out a, a little, little faster yeah i think it's also just nice in mm -hmm. regards to the efficiency of cleaning and storage yeah because like the food truck was like 30 years old or something <sighs> so it was just naturally grimy old beat up taco truck or something yeah it was a actually it was an old sausage truck nice so Cute. yeah yeah it, but it lived a full it had a full crazy it have a full glow up life yeah full yeah life. it definitely got every cent out of that investment we could it's kind of you kind of like want a story like that though like yeah. like it's kind of like if you guys just let's say you know dad was rich or whatever mm -hmm. gave me three million opened up a big brick and mortar hey we're Leroy and Lewis it doesn't have the same yeah. grit and fun to the story totally. of like we got this old shitty sausage truck and we cleaned it up and turned it into one of the best barbecue restaurants on yeah, the planet I like that's just that's as so much, cool for sure it's like that movie yeah. that chef movie yeah. remember where he dude, like i remember that when that movie came out we were like you made me tear up truck. <laughs> yeah i haven't watched it in a long time i guess it's i should watch one. it again yeah 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 i mean it's been a great journey and to see like real progress happen in the last like year it's been interesting i don't know it's just it's all like feels like a lifetime of work and also just like, like it, it happens, happens so, so quick fast, yeah. so quick so quack because so quack. it happens so quack uh, but yeah i mean it's exciting and scary i'm and super fun. grateful though that we are where we are oh yeah for sure yeah. um did you always know that you were gonna like <clears throat> be a business owner person i didn't know what i was gonna do so i had no idea but i've always been bossy and i've always <laughs> I've always, I'm, okay, well, I would say I was always a natural I was going to say, can't you not say that anymore? You can't say yeah, bossy, exactly. right? Yeah, exactly, you can't, unless you're just owning it. Yeah, why can't why can't you own it and be I like, I'm a bossy can. bad bitch? Well, I mean, I was. Okay. And I mean, I still am, but... Um, <laughs> You seem so nice to me, and, but I was so, I was so like, cause I didn't meet you for a long time. So yeah, I only yeah. met Evan cause you were having a kid and yeah. like you were yeah. MIA for a while yeah. working behind the scenes and it was, yeah. it was very Wizard of Oz like, like yeah. it was like the, the coveted yeah. Sawyer. <laughs> like we don't say her yeah. name oh, around yeah. here. Yeah. You know what and I mean? And, we really hope that she, and I meet you, you and you're just so, you're just so sweet and nice. <laughs> and I was like, why is everybody, why, you know, yeah. why, yeah. like yeah. I built Sawyer up in my head to be this scary omnipotent being and you're so sweet, but you 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 do crush that's where i get you that's where you get <laughs> until you mess up some barbecue and it's like hey you can't we just well, you know how much that cost us i'm actually I'm, I'm pretty easy going i think most of the time i just like as a kid i was i think i'm naturally control oriented okay. i'll say that so <laughs> what does that mean isn't every like woman I, no i'm just kidding <laughs> maybe but i'm even worse probably like i really like i like to know be i like to be in control of like my destiny so yeah, I suppose 100%. being an entrepreneur really works for me. Mm -hmm. I am not limited by anyone else's yes. view of me. Like I have the potential, I like I'm only limited by what I can offer that day. Yeah. Right. So, I love that. That's kind of how I feel too. I think it's awesome. Also like as a woman in this world, especially as a younger woman, people always kind of discount you and like, don't give you all of I mean, I, I know it, but it's probably just not, not even as a woman. It's like a lot of people. It's are probably just, especially in like the business world, especially, especially in like, um, like, um, a male driven, a male driven, sure. like bar, the barbecue, sure. like burly, gritty, sure. Manly work, you know? Yeah. In the same way that like, if I was like trying to get involved in the metal world, people would be like, well, okay. What? Like the music, metal yeah, music? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Uh, are I, women like Dude. Crushing? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, es and especially it. like. Like uh, I feel like if a if a girl if a metal band is like hey we're here they announce that they're you know new band new single on a label or something and there's a, a girl singer like the initial bump of just I gotta check that out yeah, right like yeah. I gotta see how this totally. chick screams you yeah, know what I mean like yeah. that even helps and then a lot of them are killing it so That's it's awesome. just you know I'm what I mean get, look up a uh, Spirit Box That's but I'm a, a sure badass it's not chick I'm band. sure it's not easy no uh, well I don't know. I feel like you you underestimate how simpy metal guys can be. Okay. Yeah, because okay. they're like, oh my god, a f girl like that likes metal. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, like I guess that's also it's, true. It's, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a, you know, I don't know, Tony. Am I wrong here? 
<laughs> okay. Yeah, okay. I, I get it. Now, actually, like, back I, me up, Tony. Come on. I understand that perspective. No, actually. yeah, but it's definitely a thing in most things. Yes. Yeah. Yes. To I to mean, to jump on what you're saying. Yeah. Like if you were going into the metal working industry, if you were gonna go yes, be a blacksmith yeah, exactly. or somebody with a, a blowtorch, yeah, yeah, or yeah. like uh, a construction worker yeah. or whatever, right? Well, and I think a lot about just like the working world. Like it's a lot about place and time and who you know and like how much opportunity they're willing to give you. And a big argument with that, and I don't get too deep in the you know i'm not a freaking sociologist or whatever so but it's i've heard the argument on the other side of that coin that it's also interest-based like a lot of maybe a lot of girls don't want to work at barbecue Right. Oh, definitely. Because it's gross. Oh, for sure. <laughs> and I, it's honestly, ashy and it's, I'm like and it's not fiery a, and smoky. Actually, Casey always like loves to give me shit because she's like, you're a, she says I'm a woman hater, which is like ironic, right? I'm not. I, can't, I don't think you can be. I'm definitely not. <laughs> but it takes a certain type of person. It takes a certain type of person, woman or not, but specifically like woman to want to do the shit that like you have to do to work at the truck right it's like dirty as shit and like yeah. hot stinky and like it's hard and you're working around dudes that like are all dudes gross that are dirty and stinky <laughs> and gross yeah i mean it's like it is probably like kind of masculine leaning for a reason you right, know? right so like you have to just really to... be willing to kind of rise above the grit well and you regardless of like you said you're not a you're you've maybe always liked barbecue but you're not like a you're not always that's not trying, um, yes. it's not your favorite it's uh, not my thing that, not i'm not thing. passionate about the barbecue more than the other parts of the elements of the business right and you will but moreover you saw it as kind of like your ticket to your destiny like you like totally. you said before so yes. you're like i'm gonna do whatever i have to do to make this totally. work and because i, do I don't want to work for I someone do else love and, people right so if i can be interested in all of those other things and create a more well-rounded brand mm -hmm. then maybe, hell yeah yeah absolutely and maybe it would help you know a lot of different businesses and different like genres or whatever you want to call it different demographics if they had a person yeah that was detached from the passion and the love and yeah, the, yeah. right because it's like sometimes well, you yeah. need a person to be like hey man like this recipe costs too much or hey sure. hey man like i know you're really all about this but it ain't selling like I know well, you really yeah. love this and recipe. I do but. love like the food and I love the service and I love the the people and I love every aspect of it. And I do love the barbecue. But like the barbecue world is so weird. It's probably one of the um maybe one of the only food like cultures that are like people are obsessed with it. Like there's people the people are like I'm a ramen guy. Like I'm a barbecue guy. Like you're you, not you, as yeah. no one's no as one's, obsessed with ramen. I'm a pizza guy. <laughs> maybe you know, yeah, like, maybe like sushi. Like, like you but know even what I mean? then, people are like, I'm a sushi guy. Like I mean, maybe yeah. I guess barbecue is one mean. of those things that consumes somebody's entire personality. Yes, yes. or like they feel like it's a defining characteristic. Like right. they have. Their identity is kind of like yes, wrapped up, in immersed it. in it, yes. and mine is certainly not. I compare it a lot to the weed, the weed industry. Yeah, and I get these weird like, like, um, what is it called when you're like deja vu when I'm yeah. at like a barbecue place sometimes, and I'm looking, I'm I'm checking out at the check stand and they're weighing the stuff, yeah. and I look over and they have their merch, and it all kind of looks like similarly well branded, right? Mm -hmm. Like they all paid a designer within a range of of dollars yeah. to make this like nice looking logo and it's yeah. like they all look unique and different but they all have this similarity yeah. about them that just reminds me so much i wish that i could put it into words how similar it is to the weed yeah. industry and I, I made a joke uh, online a long time ago that was like barbecue places are just like weed stores in texas like that's yeah. what it, it's yeah. our it's our weed stores here yeah I mean, everybody rushes to them. there's always tourists going they want to buy the merch they yeah. want the little bag that totally. has the logo on yeah. it it's very I mean that's an interesting correlation. It is funny. The craft brewing industry is very much the same. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah for yeah, sure. Especially it's all like weirdly adjacent. People who smoke weed, yeah. drink beer and eat barbecue. Yeah, it is all very well connected. <laughs> so weird. Yeah. There's a Venn diagram somewhere yeah. in that you could draw. But I'm going to be like I'm going to make a stand and I'm going to be like a I don't know what all what kind of person I'm going to be, but like yeah. I, maybe I'll be a rom like you said a ramen a ramen, per, a ramen, ramen guy. Yeah, I'm a, a ramen guy. <laughs> I'm a ramen really into I've eaten like, all 12 types of tonkatsu and yeah. I've, I've rated them on my blog. I'm more of a miso guy myself, yeah. but <laughs> Yeah, exactly. But <laughs> You're totally right though. Like, like people are crazy about barbecue. Yeah. Cole's really into it. I want to get, really dude. Into I'm it. trying to so badly Sparta 300 kick him into comedy. 
Dude, he's Cole. really funny. Cole is one of he's the most naturally he gifted, gifted hilarious guys. people I've ever met. And he's yeah. coming gonna come on the podcast and we're just gonna talk shit for two he hours. It's gonna be hilarious. He's naturally very funny. He's the yeah. best. I love him. He's um very into barbecue. How did you guys find Cole? I don't I don't actually know this story. He actually came to our first class. Oh, so you guys he was explain to people he what was that is. He was our first and only intern. So you guys do uh, classes. So we do some educational opportunities. Like we started off in, in COVID or at the end of COVID. Actually, no, we did the first one before COVID. Okay. And it was a class for 30 people and it's a weekend. They pay to come for the weekend. They learn, like we cook the whole menu with them. They We feed them throughout the weekend and they kind of learn all of our industry secrets and mm-hmm. Then some of them go home and like just become better backyard cooks, and some of them are professionals that go back to their respective states, you, mm-hmm. you know, or countries. Vermont, like the Growing, one guy yes, that's trying yeah. to do Texas barbecue in Vermont, totally. right? Yeah, or something we actually like that. probably like know all of them now. Yeah, um, which is so cool. It is really cool. It's really allowed the brand to expand even further than mm-hmm. we ever imagined it could because we have these like super fans. We have like key supporters all over the country. That's genius. Um, but it's also fun. It's a kind of a fun like coming together of our team, and you know we have fun with it. It's a lot. In the beginning, it was like so much work because you're was kind just of growing of your like network too, just Absolutely. of like people that you know that do. When yeah. you're in Vermont, you can go stop and see somebody yes. and say and promote them and say, hey, we we're have, in. You know what I mean? Because they're going to do the same thing for we you have guys. Great connections all over now because of it. So That's it's awesome. been really good, very rewarding. But yeah, we've done. So we did the first one right before COVID, and then we've done some smaller classes. We did some smaller classes through COVID because we had some limitations. Um, but now we did a thirty cla- a class for like thirty people in September. Uh, we probably won't do another one till we get into the building mm-hmm. and then kind of like regroup how we want to use the space for that. Right. Uh, but yeah, it's been great. What did I? What, uh, Cole. Cole. Sorry. Cole. Okay, my fault. so he came to the first class as a very young baby a man. young buck a very young baby man um and he was working at truth and, and then Houston, i was like right? yeah and then it was the middle of the pandemic and we really needed to hire someone but i didn't necessarily want to commit to someone that had a ton of experience and i didn't really know what was going to happen so right. i think we were like let's hire an intern <laughs> hey can you just like kind of maybe come on well, i was like- just <laughs> like i think i was like well i don't want to hire someone that like is feeding a family of four right? right i was like yeah let's hire someone that is like entry level that we can teach and like if it really works out it works out and if for some reason we have to lay off everyone and Close we're the all gonna die it'll be it'll be fine um <laughs> but so that's where cole cole came t- in the picture and he's now been with us oh, for a while he came through he's yeah for man. three years he almost four years he uh started off as the intern and now is the basically assistant pitmaster he does most of the pitmaster and resident comedian and resident comedian definitely resident he is the resident shit talker for sure he's the resident the king of the shit talkers we gotta we gotta get him in here yeah um i want to go back to something that i was uh that i asked you earlier about um like kind of how you got into you know owning a business and did you you know you didn't think that you were gonna maybe ever be a business owner was that ever i just didn't know what the you fuck didn't I was know gonna do. so you knew that you were gonna do something on your own but you didn't no, know No, honestly i just i wanted to work with people i've always been a people person mm-hmm. um i thought i was gonna do social work for a long time so like, like i graduated from ut with a degree with psychology sociology okay um i'm like i wanted thought i wanted to help people right i still do enjoy helping people but i took kind of an emotional toll on me that i wasn't expecting yeah, those like you almost to have to have like a little bit of you you have to have really good boundaries that and i'm skin. really bad with boundaries <laughs> Yeah, I'm you're like, like, let me move in with me and yeah, I'll take care of you. Exactly. You're yeah. trying to adopt all the, yeah, all the, all, all the, the strays. People. Yeah. Um, so oh. I thought I wanted to do that. And then I always supplemented my income because you also entry level social work. You literally make like $7 an hour. You did. Jesus, really? Yeah. I would make like $9 an hour. Now it would be like 12. 12. Yeah. yeah. That's ridiculous. But, um, so I always worked at, in restaurants to kind of also kind of have a different dynamic. Mm-hmm. Um, and then got more and more committed over time. And I'm like, I'm pretty, or- I'm very organized, very type A. I wish I had some of that. I mean, it's good to have. <laughs> I need a uh, Sawyer <laughs> someday. Most I'll find people one. say that, actually. Sarah will gotta, be my Sawyer. Yeah, it's, you got to yeah. have, you got to at least, 
you don't have to do it. You just have to find someone that can. Right. Exactly. Building the team is what's. I just important. need somebody to be like, you need to be here. You need to get this done by then, and then you oh, need to I'm get like here by then. Oh, I'm like a deadline. I love it. I'm I addicted to deadlines. I love them. Um, yeah, I have I to manage it. my own expectations and set expectations for everyone around yeah. me all the time. That is like so what, what I what most I enjoy people. Doing. I feel like most people that are committed to the restaurant industry or like have worked in it their whole lives. Mm-hmm. You're like, are you going to open up a restaurant? And they go, hell no. Yes. Right. Yeah, I always wanted. I always wanted to do it. Okay. I just so you did always it. want to kind of when have I, your own. When I moved into like management, mm-hmm. I knew like I am not going to do this forever. Right, I'm and that's the top. This. That's basically as much as high as you could yeah, go exactly. up the ranks. Exactly. You're like, am I? I'm not going to run someone else's restaurant for the rest of my life. There's so many limitations to that. Yeah. Um, but I'm going to take all of these opportunities to learn what I need to know, to do it myself. Yeah. And then I did it myself. And that is like, if I can say anything about being an entrepreneur, is like you have to put yourself out there constantly. No one's going to do anything for you. You have to do, like, if you don't know how to do something, you have to find a way to figure it out. Google it. Yeah, or like... Call somebody. Call your friend. Mm -hmm. Ask ask for a meeting. Um, But yeah, I think it makes sense for me. I, I, like, I can't imagine living a lifestyle otherwise. Yeah, I've been out of the game for so long, like... <clears throat> I quit my last job working for somebody else, um, you know, that wasn't like a contracted yeah. thing um, in like 2016. Damn. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it's been up and down since then. And it's kind of just I always tell everybody they're like, man, you're doing a lot of stuff like that's cool. And I'm like, I'm just trying not to go back to work like it's totally, just yeah. I'm running away from like, you know, yeah. Like, I don't want to go back to the like nine to five thing. It's yeah. kind of the forbidden fruit. Like once you've tasted you're yeah, like, how do I keep this autonomy, fucking, yeah. how do I keep this freedom, right? For sure. And I remember I was even applying for jobs. My resume is fucked. Like, if I have to, it's like, puts me kind of in a bad, I mean, it, it isn't, it isn't. Like, I, These days, people admire that, though. But, like, I when I first moved here, right, I didn't have any clients set up yet, and I was just kind of door dashing, mm-hmm. and I was like, ah, we have an expensive apartment, like, and we just spent all our money moving. Like, I need to figure out yeah. what I'm going to do. So, you know, all my friends that I made here, like, a lot of them work these tech jobs where they, they're like, yeah, yeah. But, and I'm like, what do you do? And they like, can't get, really give me an answer because they mm-hmm. don't really do anything, and yeah. they make, like, 90K a year plus also, commission. Yeah, fuck them, but uh, I mean, but but also good for them. Yeah, I was like, let me get one of those jobs for now, like until like yeah, you know totally. what I mean, just so yeah. I can like I can do all my shit, and then I can yeah. like log into a Zoom call and yeah. make ninety grand a year. Like, let's do that, and yeah. then and then uh, like, but for some reason, it's like I wasn't getting any reply. My resume is literally all the things that I've done at all my different businesses that I <laughs> that I started over the. Last, they're like, is this guy a con artist? You know what I mean? <laughs> like. Is this guy just full that's of shit? So just a funny. career failure? Oh my like, God, and that's so, so, funny. so it's like it's I. My friends are like, oh, it's so you know, cool. You got you just get to fuck around and do whatever. But it's like, okay, a, I don't have a secure. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm more secure now than I've ever been because I have good clients with that, that I have am friends with you guys yeah. and John yeah. and it's people and like, and then I have stuff ironed out so I'm getting the same amount every month. But there's like yeah. a lot of people. It took me a long time to get there of like 200 bucks here, 200 bucks there. Like, am I gonna be able to pay rent this month? Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, and, I still have those moments where there's right. instability in what we do too. Right. Even all the way up to you know being a being somebody on the top of the barbecue chain. You know oh, what I mean? Yeah, Whatever. It's like, it's like wildly unpredictable. Right. It's so inconsistent. It's and also. Scary. So, I mean, we literally, I was going to make this joke earlier. Nathan and I talk about, like, if we fail. Like, because we could. Sure, you got to have a plan. And, I mean, this is a big, expensive project that we've put everything we have into. Right. If it doesn't work out, what are we going to do? I'm like, well, we'll just move to, we'll just move to Portland. Ver- Vermont. <laughs> yeah, or, or whatever. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, like, all, the, the, be- the beauty of the restaurant industry is, like, t- if you're open to it, It'll take you in wherever. Right. You can you, know? you can pivot. I can hustle through almost anything. Right. Because I've done it forever. Do you, do you think about that sometimes? Like what it would be like to go back to like you're applying yeah. at jobs and they're like, oh, so you were, you know, at Leroy and Lou. It would happen yeah, there. I you mean, know what I mean? And I, how weird that would just because I would be weird. But I've seen other people do it. I've yeah. seen like we had a consultant at a restaurant I worked in in Colorado, the restaurant I was talking about earlier. We had a consultant that had run her own business and it didn't work out. Yeah. And I mean, it was a family business and she was insightful in a lot of ways. Um, I mean, and they paid her a lot of money, I think. I don't know. It just I feels so know. weird for us. I think I like entrepreneur type. I hate calling myself that, but it's like, you know, people yeah. that do their own thing. And then to the thought of going back, you're kind of just like, ah, 
Like yeah. it's almost seems like the it's like the business version of like going back to school almost. Totally. Right. Like or maybe going back to school would be interesting because I yeah. certainly didn't do a great job the first time. I've thought about that, too. Just like, I don't know. Sometimes I just feel stupid. You know what I mean? But Sometimes I'm like, you talk to somebody smarter than you and you're like, damn. Yeah. Or I'm just like, <laughs> that's why I'm reading books now. That's awesome. Um, I, I but it is interesting. I think having a child has put Ooh, yeah. this financial stability in a different perspective for me because I've never been money but motivated. Like, right. but I also just always hustled. Like, I always am like, right. I mean, when I was working a serve job, I'd be like, I'm going to go over to work today and leave with $400 cash. Yeah, and we're going to crush fine. today. Yeah. yeah, it'll be okay. Like, I know I can always do that, yeah. right? But now, like, I don't have a lot of savings. I don't have a lot of, like, I don't have, like, a 401k. Mm -hmm. I don't have... We didn't choose that path. I didn't choose that path, and we I'm okay with it. Yeah, I am, And I've too. definitely been okay with it for a long time. But it is sometimes... We think about it sometimes. But sometimes I'm like, oh, well, my friend that works at wherever tech company bullshit i don't know she right. doesn't know what the fuck she does <laughs> yeah or like they have like a they have like two pools and i'm like i'm like what do you, Why do you need two yeah, pools I don't know. no yeah, it's only one large no, no, pool, but, you know they have two tvs near their pool yeah but yeah there's you're sometimes like, you're like you're just playing with meats and you're, you're just like, <laughs> like there are times where i'm like evaluating my life being like oh yeah did I make the right decisions? And I'm always like, I did. And then you go do something with the staff. And you're like, yeah. I, I, I mean, something. every day, yeah. honestly, I, I really love what I do. And I feel very lucky to say mm -hmm. that. And, like, I'm not just bullshitting. Like, I really, really like what I do. It's very, it's very rewarding. It's empowering, too, to build some shit from nothing. Yeah, you I really I mean? hope it works out because I really don't oh, want to have to go and, like. it's going to work out. You guys are so popping. But crazy. I am, like, I am capable of doing other things. Yeah. Is like, what else? What else would you want to do? I mean, I like if you were gonna do if let's say Leroy yeah. Lewis is a Terry Black's machine. Yeah. In five years, and you'd really you don't even really look at the numbers. Yeah. Uh, Candace takes care of that for you. Yeah. Um, I can't wait to meet Candace. Oh, dude, I know. Uh, we all need a Candace, but you're but um, what's and you just have let's say you have a bunch of money to go play around yeah. and do different entrepreneurial things. What is something you would want to do? Pipe dream here. That's like. Maybe yeah. not food or like a different type or like, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I like, I don't know. It's complicated because I've been so inundated, like overwhelmed with like what we've been doing now and like the present, which is good. And also I think having a kid, I used to live in the future all the time. Mm. And now having a child, I live in the present way more than I ever have before. Because you kind of have to just like survive every moment. Well, and you want to enjoy it too, right? Yeah. I mean, in a weird but way. But you do I want know it's to enjoy tough, it. But it's, it's like... hard to do that while you're like making sure they don't hurt themselves. Mm -hmm. But like I'm very much like more present than I've ever been. Um, but I'm always kind of thinking towards the future. I don't know. There's all sorts of concepts that I think would be fun. I... You don't have to go too deep just to, you don't have to Honestly, reveal anything, no, but just I like. I think that like, I kind of struggle with this idea that like, I want to be actively involved in everything I do. I don't ever really imagine myself being like a super passive. Like when you were saying that I, I was MIA while I was having this child. You um, were and you weren't. Well, no, but I wasn't there physically a lot. Yeah. I mean, I, I was there, like I was trying to be there more and more, mm -hmm. but not being there was really hard on me. Well, then everyone's probably too. I feel like maybe this plays into being a woman too, especially maybe. when you have a kid where they're oh, like, oh, God. no, Sawyer, Sawyer, don't. Let yeah. me do it, right? And you're yeah. like, motherfucker, I've been, yeah, totally. I've been nursing this kid and yeah. and trying to get some sleep. Now, now I want to do some shit. Let me do totally. some shit. Yeah, I, I need to feel like myself. Right, I'm not I'm, pregnant anymore. I, I find value <laughs> in doing a lot, you know. Yeah. Um, so totally, but I don't know. I have. I have all sorts of ideas. Like, it'd be fun to have a bar, but then again, like, I'm not really work like awake during bar hours anymore, so that mm -hmm. would be a challenge. Um, I would like to theoretically have, like, a cool hotel or something, like That'd a be cool. small hotel. Like that you the East curate. Austin one yeah. or whatever? That would be super yeah. fun. Like, I loved the idea when I was young. I, like, wanted to have a hostel because I think yeah. hostels are cool. You, you always have, like, a, you always attract, like, fun, loving mm -hmm traveling interesting people oh yeah like that i like the idea of like creating a community like that you should look up the society hotel or write it take a note okay. down um it's this place in portland that um i don't know if it ever ended up doing very well because they stuck it in like a really shitty 
scary part of downtown that got it was already bad like my whole life yeah. not it wasn't the best area but yeah. then it really got bad yeah you know when okay, portland well, got bad but the, but it looks it's really dope how they set everything up they was kind of like an it's a european style hostel mm -hmm. the old hotel they reformed and then yeah. they put like a sick bar in it it's got a dope rooftop patio bar where you can view the whole city from like the center of downtown it's a great idea super would work in a lot of places <laughs> yeah but uh and like every it was like a bunk setup where like there was like rooms yeah. but then there was like an open bunk setup with like charger ports and it was kind of modernized it was yeah fun. i think that that's fun super idea. interesting and that actually leads me to what i would actually i think want to do which took me it took me that long to even come up with this because i'm so Right. buried in shit all the time right now let's think let's have fun for just this moment and just yeah. like think about the i future. would travel Okay. Because I really nice. like traveling. Nathan and I did a lot of traveling in our 20s. Where'd you go? Um, I mean, we were in all over Europe for a while. We've done like camping-esque kind of camping, like staying in a hotel, mm -hmm. like camp for Glamping. four or five days. Not even really. Like we had a, we bought a pop-up camper for a mm -hmm. while. We did it. Would like travel, stay in it for a while, and then like go to, like for example, we would go through a national park stay there and then go to an adjacent city and then like kind of regroup in the city and like enjoy the city for a couple of days and then do it again um so we've explored most of the united states i haven't we haven't done like upper west coast like idaho and stuff like that yeah actually Washington. we have done what uh, we, ha we have done both of okay. those um I've never done. Do you, have you been to like Montana, Wyoming? I've n I, we've gone through Montana and Wyoming. Okay. I would like to spend more time there. I think that's the most beautiful part of America. Yeah. Personally, I'm um, trying to go to Asia. Me too. Like I was, I've ASAP. never. I've never been to Asia. So I want to go or, to Japan. I've been to. We've been to India, but we've never been to Asia. So yeah. I would really like to go to Asia. I heard you talking about that at Thanksgiving. Yeah, I want to go. So really want to do that. Um, and I really, I've never been to. Um, Ireland, Scotland. I would mm. like to do that. Evan gets to do all the fun, all the fun yeah, travel he's stuff. Do all the fun stuff. Honestly, <laughs> it was just bad timing this time, yeah. this last time. But he does get to do cool shit. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, you'll get, you'll get your time. Oh, you'll will. be like, It'll oh, be the fine. brick and mortar needs you, buddy. Yeah, I mean, we and I and I. Numbers are all set up. Charts and graphs yeah, are good. Yeah, exactly. I'm gonna go. I'm going we're to going. Asia. Yeah, I can't wait. <laughs> but yeah, we're gonna do like I think that eventually when we're really like have laid. A foundation mm -hmm. for prosperity that's what i would like to do and i will find time probably travel and experience over let's start another money making thing no probably both probably both. like okay. maybe a little bit of yeah a little relax it's also time. important i feel like to travel and like to experience novelty in order to get inspiration mm. yeah because like i'm not super inspired by like a lot of the things that are happening around us yeah. now is in your bubble too right yeah like, exactly yeah, you unless have to i'm gonna go spend out. like 500 dollars on a meal that i'm gonna be like that's uchi that's or pretty something. good yeah. you know i do like uchi yeah but just in general yeah i mean there's only so much you can get out yeah. of your immediate surrounding totally. places you've seen i mean that's why i'm still in the honeymoon phase like i'm so inspired i go to a new mm -hmm. street I'm like ooh. I you know what it. I mean? I'm like, ooh, look at the street. I've we never, I've turned too. turned down this road in East it's Austin that I've new, never seen, yeah. and there's a whole that, whoa, Burnett, yeah. like, whoa, what's going on over here? Yeah, there's yeah. whole, there's like, I love that part of it. That's why I had to leave Portland because I spent so much time there that like I knew what was around every totally. corner, and then it was like if a new place was going to open up, all the media hit it, and then everyone just it's 75 minute wait, you know what I mean, or whatever to get a, yeah. get a, get your name on the list, and it's like I was just like I need. I need everything around me to be new, like all the time for a couple of years. Yeah. That's what I need. I need a complete I refresher. I was like that too. And I mean, I'm pretty like novelty seeking. Like there's certain parts of my life that are very, um, have been very stable for a long time. So adventure seeking within, like within a certain. Like family and. Like, well, I mean, I've been with Nathan for almost 17 yeah. years. Yeah. Right. So when we were young, we, we've been together for a long time. So going out and like experiencing the world together was really powerful for us mm -hmm. as a, as like a team. Yeah. Um, and like, I mean, definitely sought out a lot of novelty with food and drinks for a long time, but like, it's kind of a dragon that I feel like I'm not, like I'm chasing the dragon. I'm not, yeah. I'm not getting the same highs I used to get. Well, off of, off of just around what's around here, what's around here, you mean, just or just like in, in general? general. I mm. think like, 
being a new mom is hard. First of all, I just like every time. Yeah, what's that like? It's <laughs> fucking hard. <laughs> Anytime I'm like, oh, I'm gonna get drunk. I have time to like drink tonight. The next day I'm like, that was so stupid. Like, why did I do <laughs> I that? It's so bad. Kids. Anytime I'm like, let's go to this fancy dinner. I'm like, I spent six hundred dollars and now I can't like afford diapers next week. You know, right. like it's one of those things. Like, I used to be a little bit more carefree with my time and, and money, money yeah. and like the highs were pretty high. Mm-hmm. And now there seems like. But then There's the high you get from parenting and like For the, sure. the kids like stuff, the right? Like the yes. first steps, first word. Oh, we're not totally. there yet, right? He's it's he is walking. Oh wow, a little bit. Okay. Did he say mom or dad first yet? Is he definitely happened? used to say dada a lot, and then now he says mama. Nice. He's, he's, now he says both. He wised up. He's very cute. He was like, I should probably get on her side. Yeah, actually. yeah. He likes me. <laughs> I know he. Likes she me. holds the keys. I'm yeah. Gonna... Uh, but yeah, you're. It's definitely like a good exchange, mm. and it's also a level of novelty that I've never experienced. Like having growing a child inside of you and then having a kid. That's crazy. Is the most novel thing I think humans can experience. It's like a lot of responsibility, obviously, but I did it because I wanted, I want to experience life to the fullest. And for me, that was part of it. Yeah. Yeah, my girlfriend like, doesn't yeah. want to have kids right now. We've been together for like ten years, so she would have. Yeah, let I mean, know right she doesn't. Totally she fine. still doesn't feel like she wants to have them and that's indefinitely, okay. and that's cool with me. But you I know, mean, it well, sounds fun, but it also sounds so like much, a thing yeah. that I can't really handle right now. If oh, I want to do, do it if like I want to really do all my fun it. stuff, you know, yeah, I want go, something needs to take go off to first. Japan. Yeah, I'm gonna go to Japan first. Yeah. Well, and that's what I've been telling. Kind of a ramen guy. I'm gonna go to Japan. Damn it, me too. I guess I need to go. I get a bunch of ramen shirts and hats. Yeah, exactly. Um, Brandon, I'm gonna be a ramen. Next time you see me, right. I have like a ramen branded jacket. Tatsuya jacket. So yeah, funny. Um, but yeah, the I don't know. It's it, parenthood is like a huge endeavor, and I wouldn't push it on anyone. Yeah, there because are pushy people. There are pushy I hate parent those people. people. You don't know. I fucking hate One of my them. best friends is like that. I hate those. I'm people. just like he doesn't even have a kid yet, and I'm just like, and oh he's God. like, yeah, and he's and like, you don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. He's just like a nuclear family I guy. Mean, I you get know? it that people like, and the, I think it's just human nature that like, if you're really deeply entrenched in a certain lifestyle, y- you want other people to under around you to understand what it feels like, and you want to relate naturally to the people around mm-hmm. you, and it is a very positive experience for the most part. So I think you want to see that in the people you love, but yeah. it's also like. I'm like you in the fact that I like a lot of things about life. Yeah, and like to do stuff and, I don't and try live a, things, yeah, and I don't, take risks. Yeah, and I don't live a typical lifestyle, and that's something I've never really wanted to have. Mm-hmm. So bringing a kid into my atypical lifestyle has been ch- more challenging than someone that has that cush-ass right. pool, and right. they're like the 8 to 5, job. and they don't have to worry about... Really and they work from home, yeah, and they yeah. can bounce the baby while they're doing yeah, sales exactly. calls. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Like, that's... Like some people have the resources, I think, to have a kid, uh, s- like move into their lives a little bit more seamlessly than mine. I think it means your kid's gonna be way cooler. Though. Oh yeah, he'll your be kid's cool. gonna be so cool. Yeah, he think will about be cool. it. Like yeah, he's that kind a of bunch like of cool people, creative. A lot. Yeah. Like didn't choose the totally. You know, he'll probably get that tech job. You know probably, what I mean? Maybe, like, yeah, maybe my can, parents like, were always doing weird yeah, projects and totally. shit. Totally. Yeah. Maybe and he's like, all I want is stability. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I really want to be a doctor. <laughs> like maybe, maybe that. You're will like, work thank out. God you can take care of us because this yeah. business might fail. So totally. yes, exactly. <laughs> we're yeah. gonna need you to get a go to school yes. and work hard and yes. get a run of the mill job. Uh, yeah. No risks for you. Uh, don't follow your dreams. Hey, um, honestly, if, <laughs> I, if that works out for him, then like you know, there's a part of me that's like that I. I don't want that for myself. Yeah. But like if my kid wanted to take well, you never, that easier right. way out to live like a happy, stable, healthy life, if he's emotionally yeah, stable and shit. But those people are the uneasy part of that is that you're not happy when you make when you sure, when you take that. But there that are route. people that are happy that are like that because they have hobbies. God, I wish I was I wish I was one of those people. My hob I don't have the stability and then all my hobbies just became my mm-hmm. baskets that I put my eggs in. Totally. That's and then, what like, happened. Also hobbies are really like really good ones are really expensive. Mm-hmm. Cameras. Yeah. Music. The bikes and podcasting. Yeah, I mean all <laughs> yeah, this shit that this yeah, is just a hobby. It's so funny. Yeah. Yeah. I I don't have hobbies because I you have businesses. Like I do. I don't really have a lot of time for hobbies, and I'm like so deeply entrenched in what I do. That if you I don't did, have time. what would you do? Would you go back? Would you I do don't acting, have community any. theater? No, no. No, you'd no. never go back. I, no, I don't. I couldn't hand you a script right now. No. You wouldn't give me any. I reads? do have dreams where I'm doing it. 
Really? Yeah. You still have uh, yeah. thespian dreams? Mm-hmm, I still have thespian dreams. <laughs> yeah, I I don't even know. I don't even want to speculate about hobbies because I really... You don't need to get any ideas I right now? I don't know. Nathan, Your my husband, has a lot of hobbies, too. Well, he's so, living the good life, then. Yeah, he has a good life. But I always see him. He's like, I tried these tried these eight wines today, and uh, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. they're all great. <laughs> it's he's like, like, no, notes. he's like really into like. <laughs> I'm just kidding, Nathan. He's into uh, right now. He also like recently got into sports for like the first time in his life. Oh my god! So watching nice. him like into sports is like so kind weird. of traumatic for me. I'm like, <laughs> I never wanted Jesus. This. Yeah, this is like 16 years later. He's like watching like watching like his the football scores and shit. I'm like. You're like, you're like, I, I pop a kid out and you become <laughs> yeah, but, football dad. Yeah, it's literally. <laughs> and then he, I mean, he's like super into all sorts of shit. He just dives in deep. He's like, our son's going to play for the play real ball. Dude, no, I think he's I'm like, going to get those yeah, rings. No, I'm going to get, you're going to start actually, on the starting yeah, line. I think you'd like, there's a part of him that would think that. And then there's a part of him that's like, absolutely not. My kid is not doing that. Yeah. Like it's horribly like, right. It's like horrible for their bodies. Well, and and you never I always feel like it's I feel like it's pretty easy math with like parenting stuff like the stuff you want your kid to do. They're never going to do or want to do. Right. Like my dad played football. There was he had a dream, I think, of me playing football and he's from Ohio, Ohio State. You know, like he didn't go to Ohio State, but he lived around it Mm -hmm. and like big deal. Even at the elementary school level, football is in the Mm -hmm. DNA of people in Ohio. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And they are good. It's good. Mm -hmm. My cousin is the freak of the family and he's um, shout out to Kobe. He is uh, like six, five or something. He's the only tall person, like enormously tall. He's like. 250 huge dude yeah and he's uh starting like playing on fox now he's a freshman in oh, college cool. That's awesome. i think yeah and uh and he's playing for it's not ohio state but it's like university of, but it's like i'm the gorman name is on the tv yeah. you know what i mean i'm like get him kobe it, yeah but uh but, but like there it. was a dream that my dad had i think that uh, you know, for just a brief moment where that I would be yeah. into it too, but I yeah. just wasn't a sporty kid. Yeah, I, I liked snacks and I liked video games. Yeah. That was what I I was like, get me I, done I with p- this yeah. this this practice so I can play Final Fantasy, please. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, and, are you still a video game guy? You know, I've actually been trying to like unwind recently because like I'll do this thing where I'll be here. Or I'll be out yeah. shooting stuff, or I'll come here and work and work, and then mm-hmm. I'll go home and I bring my laptop home and I'm working on podcasts and I'm working on other stuff, and yeah. and it's like I just need to turn my and then I go to sleep yeah. and I'm like thinking about all these things, right? Yeah. And it's like I just need to turn my brain off. So I've been trying, but honestly, it's I think I'm getting a bigger. You're talking about getting the high and chasing the dragon. I'm getting a bigger dragon chase high from like doing shit. Like recently, since I moved, even like. The a when the sun is out, which is most of the year, like I want to get out and yeah. I want to walk around and I want to go do be healthy and then like be like there's so much comedy. I could be at an open mic. I could mm-hmm. be uh, doing a podcast for me. I, I work on my other friend's podcast here. He's really funny. We're trying to help him, you know, boost his podcast and stuff. And so I'm like, there's so many things and basically there's an endless amount of shit on my computer that needs to be looked yep. at and done mm-hmm. yep. for f- five people at any yeah. given time and so it's like i don't have the time and but at the same time it's not like oh i wish i had the time to sit and play video games. it's like yeah. you know what i mean but i'm definitely more active i wish i had like the, it sounds weird to say but i wish i had like this body and physique or whatever or active active activeness level when i was younger because i was always kind of like the awkward guy on the field you know what I mean? Yeah. Or like I was never as athletic as other kids. Like it was really weird. I don't know. But then and then and it's a big competition thing in high school, too. You know what I yeah. mean? But uh, but well, but yeah, you, know, you you did fine. You turned out sure. Okay. I turned out good. Like like I said, like if I could, you know, it would be not smart of me because I'm aging to like join a football <laughs> league right now. You know, true. We all good have those job. things when we're, we're, when we're 30. <laughs> we're like, I got a skateboard again. I was like, yeah, you did all of that. Shit. And you're just literally you hurt yourself once and you're like, why did I he do literally that? He did all of it. He got a skateboard at one point. <laughs> he hurt himself. He started trying to get back into tennis. He like tore his ACL. <laughs> Yeah, he oh, got no, really into Nathan, biking. No. He separated his shoulder. He's you're, done all of these. He's gone through all of these. You're doxing our boy right yeah, now. Yeah, I know. I mean, no, but at the same time, I love that. I admire that he is willing to he try had that, some fun shit. He had that oomph again. Yeah, yeah exactly. he's always like that. He's always like, yeah, I'm like into this now, and I'm gonna go and do it. And but, then, oh yeah, I remember what I was talking about. But yeah. the uh, like the kids never want to do. Like I just yeah, never wanted yeah, to do. You yeah, know what I mean? And so it's yeah. like it's kind of that like classic. Like if you you know. 
I don't know. Like if you, you put, if you want like your you kid push, to do something, yeah, just don't just don't push it on them and see if they like. You just and you can't. Yeah. You got to just get lucky that and yeah. just hope they like what you like. And if they don't, then maybe that's great too. And that's unique too. I don't know. That's the thing. I'm pretty open minded. Like as long as he is not a complete like asshole. As, yeah, I guess as long as he's not a <laughs> complete asshole. If he has like a a good work ethic. If he is like kind enough, mm-hmm. you know, like you I want him to be a little a- bit of yeah. an asshole though, because like, like just cool. a little, yeah, just like, like co- enough to be cool. Because cool. you're, because if you're too nice, yeah, you're kind I mean, of a that dork, whole dude. Dichotomy is like it so, is so overwhelming weird. to me because like it's you so do weird. want them to be cool, but you also want them to be nice, right? Because if he's because t- if he's choose- too nice, girls will think he's weird. I know, right? God, if he like right. opens the door for him and stuff, he can't be doing that. Yeah, you can't be telling girls you love them. You can't be can't. You got to give them the rundown. I'm not worried about him being too. Uh, yeah. Dorky. <laughs> no, I mean he he might be dorky, but not because of that. Yeah, I was I, a dork growing up. I I uh, I looked like uh, I looked like uh, everybody said I looked like Jerry Maguire's kid. No, I, I my like, parents. Yeah. I had a spiky blonde mullet and I had glasses. Cute. And uh, I played Froggy in the Little Rascals. Cute. And I realized that was when I was seven. I realized that that was my origin story for doing metal vocals. Like it all hit me recently. Oh man. I was like, because I was like, yeah. How you're, yeah, I'm Froggy from the Little Rascals, right? Yeah. And I was like, oh my God. See, it's my origin story. Somewhere. That's <laughs> awesome. Yeah, it's, I, I feel like all of the people I know that were like super cool, they don't live really cool. Like in in high school and junior high, yeah, they all no. live like pretty shitty lives. They're born. They're born. I people. mean, I'm sure they're they're definitely people that like exist without that, like outside of that. Sure. Oh, definitely. I mean, definitely. I don't know any of the cool kids from my high school graduating class that are doing anything cool, really. Yeah. Like all like, the kids yeah. that were the cool kids. Not. Co- Why does it work well, that way? It's so funny. There. They peak mm, there. That's what like it is. Yeah. You always it's hear like that. Big, you peaked like, in high school or it's whatever. Like the it's a big fish in a small pond kind of thing and you get right. used to that feeling and so you're not as i was the prone. popular girl when i, I think was you're 16. not as prone to like go out and find something else yeah you know if you're like i mean i could take it or leave my high school experience so i gotta keep and i gotta keep going and meet more people that i actually connect with then yeah did you go to college right after high school too yes yeah i, I didn't would do not do that again really i was so stupid yeah i was so <laughs> drunk and so stupid <laughs> I seriously, I was so drunk. You went to drinking school. (laughs) Yeah, I'm so like I. It's a party town. I I drive around the campus when I'm like I'm going to get food or whatever, and I'm just like, dude, if I was here when I was a kid, when I was 16, 17, 18, whatever, I would be partying. Oh, we partied hard. Also, there's not a lot of account when you go to a giant school like UT. There's not a lot of accountability. Like you cannot go to class all the time and like get by. So I didn't. Mm. I did graduate, but barely. Yeah. And I mean, I learned a lot. I definitely like shifted my being around like like minded, educated people from kind of all over, I think was really powerful. Yeah. Like it was important to be around. Cool, smart, like well-intentioned, pretty bright kids mm. and like because you had to be a certain level of, of yeah. academically, yeah. you know, it's doing academically school. well to yeah. go there. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I could never. I mean, I did well in, but I did well in, uh, like growing up because I came from a small town that like, yeah, the education system is limited, you know. So, yeah. I was like, like the, I'm in the top of my class, but that doesn't mean I'm like actually one of the smartest people in the <laughs> yeah. world or whatever. I'm from a small town. I'm from a small town. <laughs> the class was small. The class was small. Yeah. And they didn't know much. Seriously. <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, moving to Austin and being around, like, smart kids from all over, especially, like, big schools or, like, Dallas-Houston magnet schools or, like, people that their parents, like, really invested in their education and shit. Mm -hmm. Like, I was a mind fuck. Also, I never knew how to study. I didn't, like, never had to try I could never take notes. I could never study. Yeah. I just couldn't give a shit. And then, like, right after high school, it was like, oh... Wait, I have to go back and do more of this shit? I thought yeah. we just got done with this. Honestly, I feel like if I went back now, I would be a really good I would student. crush. Yeah, yeah, I would crush. Yeah. I would, I would so, get I would get some notepads that smell yeah. good, you know? Yeah, mm, I mean, I would care. Notes. I would definitely care about writing. my notes. I would take it seriously. I would yeah. try to learn for the sake of learning, you know, maybe. But then you wouldn't, yeah, it's like if you were to go back and do it all over again, it's like you wouldn't be where you are now. Yeah, and I wouldn't do it that differently. Yeah. I mean, I would probably try to take care of my body a little bit better. Yeah. Because, like, I was, like, really drunk. 
<laughs> What's one of the craziest drug oh, stories? So you have a good stupid. drug story? Oh, I mean, I have so many, but like one that you can God. tell. Uh, I mean, I like one time. I mean, so so many fucking gross, like so drunk. Uh, <laughs> one time, we went to a party. This was like my freshman year in college, and like all, it's also so shitty. Like I lived in a shitty dorm at UT. There was a girls' dorm, and it was like one of the older dorms. And at UT, like. They want to design it so you not really like don't have a car. But I'm from small town Texas, and you, and like it's in the middle of Texas, so you need a car to go anywhere. Mm-hmm. So we always had a car, and I had a parking pass. But like the, the garage is like far away from your dorm. So one time we went to a party, and like I, I obviously blacked out. Woke up, me and my friend are like asleep, like passed out in the way back of my car, <laughs> like. 10 a.m. the next day both of us were like what the fuck how did we end up here yes also i mean at least you were there of all not in the back of somebody else's car (laughs) but at the same time like how do we get here yeah and then how did we i guess we didn't even try to make it did your friend were your friends like oh my god you should have seen yourself last night no i mean that was pretty it was pretty standard yeah yeah (laughs) also i'm a pretty good i mean i'm a i'm a sloppy drunk at a certain point but or i used to be specifically I, I mean, it only it only happens once in blue moon. Right. Um, but I'm like not a. I'm pretty nice. Drunk. Yeah. No, but like, are you one of the ones where like nobody knows that you're that you're blacked out, but you are? They're like, I was taught. You told me. Uh, Probably, you told you were telling yeah. me stuff about World War Two, and no, you're just like, yeah, <laughs> you were I mean, you were yes. spouting off facts about economics. No, I just become like a zombie. I'm just like. <laughs> Sarah is like she. You have no idea yeah, until she like dangerous. does something, and you're just like, oh my god, she's gone. Yeah. You know what yeah, I mean? Like, She'll. She yeah. She just like talks a... to you. Nor one time I. <laughs> trying to figure out how to tell this story on stage because it's so funny but we were um like uh rafting or uh, inner tubing down yeah. a river like you would mm-hmm. here you know and uh there was this part of this river where if you don't go far enough to the left you'll kind of get sucked into this little whirlpool it's not like a huge deal but yeah. it is kind of oh, dangerous that, for drunk yeah. people but like me. you, you just kind of have it. to like paddle yourself out on your floaty right yeah and so we got off right where you're supposed to get off and then our friends got kind of sucked into the whirlpool and sarah's a confident swimmer she's a good swimmer but we're sitting there and she's like uh we've been drinking all day on this river and she just gets up stands up and she goes i'm gonna go grab him (laughs) i'm gonna go get him yeah like no big deal i'm gonna go grab him real quick and and i was like sarah no you're not like you're fucking black like she like you know like yeah. stumbled or something like i knew i f- she she gave it away to me and i was like oh no like we no more water for you like <laughs> like you're yeah, this is dangerous yeah. and this the 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 superhero confidence that she ha- i'm gonna go get him real quick it's not a big deal and i'm like no you're not and then there's these other you know there's all kinds of people floating yeah. down the river and she was like adamant drunk about going into the water and saving our friends in this whirlpool <laughs> and so i kind of had to like restrain mm-hmm. her and oh, i like no. sat her down i was like you're not gonna go in there right now and then i get these these other couples looking at me like jesus christ yeah, this like guy's this fucking this abusing guy. piece of shit and totally. it's like no, no no my girlfriend is gonna black out superhero yeah. this fucking she's gonna drown in there i feel like you know, Ethan has experienced that the nonchalant list just yeah. killed me i'm gonna go get i'm gonna go get him i'll take care of it it's not a big deal <laughs> You guys are pussies. Yeah, I'm just yeah. like Sarah. Wait, at least she's confident. Like, who is this forty a... year old lifeguard that lives inside <laughs> my forty year old male lifeguard that lives inside of my girlfriend's body? Yeah, I don't so, only great. comes out when she gets drunk on the river. Yeah, but, for um, me it's like I'm just like a little bit of a zombie. I'm like chilling and then I'll like walk off like a ledge or something. You'll like, step off a the... curb bad. Yeah. That's me. Um how long have we been going, Tony? Oh man, okay, well we gotta wrap it yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, we'll wrap it up. I just I wanna go relieve my husband and yes, my child. I just wanted to touch on one more thing. I think this I, is a really good place to end it, awesome. if that's okay. Yeah. Um so I've been thinking a lot about this just in life and in general and talking to friends that are like they wanna move down here, they're mm-hmm. sick of Portland or whatever, or yeah. they see that I'm doing a podcast, I'm doing all this Do fun they need stuff. A job? <laughs> Maybe, yeah, <laughs> actually. Maybe. Yeah, for real. Yeah, we'll talk about that <laughs> yeah. later. But um it all to me, you know, like I've had my buddy, one of my guys is always dealing with problems and just can't figure it out he's like you're so lucky or whatever and says this and that and that kind of like yes i feel blessed and i feel lucky and stuff but i've I've tried to because i've heard that from a couple friends and stuff it it kind of rubs me the wrong way because i feel like when i when i think when i try to think about that there's definitely a lot of luck involved and a lot of you know Mm -hmm. magic but um 
it to me all comes down to like taking risks mm-hmm. and living a risky weird life kind of like we've yep. been talking about and so i just wanted to touch on like when people specifically with business to, and how it relates to you like it I think a lot of people don't take risks getting into business stuff because they feel like they're not ready. And I hear that yeah. a lot. I'm not ready. I don't know enough about food yet. I don't know enough about barbecue yeah. yet or about brewing yet or whatever, mm-hmm. what podcasting, whatever. And yeah. it's like at some point you, you're never, I just wanted to basically bring that up and it's like, you're never going to be ready. Right. Were you yes. guys ready to like start this fucking big barbecue yeah, shit? Was. You, you, know, you were pretty ready. I mean, okay. But, how, okay, I have two feelings about that. Okay. Because, like, it also comes back to the thing that, like, people say you're never ready to have a kid. You're never ready to have a kid. Right. Everyone always fucking says that. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. But some people are actually not ready to have a kid. And some people are not made to be entrepreneurs. Yeah. Like, some people, like, if you do not want to put yourself out there and grind hard most days... Like no one's gonna do for it for little or you. no reward. Yeah, or like massive reward, but sometimes right. it's fleeting, and it's certainly well. Not- there's definitely no good job today. Yeah, from somebody. There's nobody going, hey, yeah. good, great job yeah, today. Yeah, for sure. Like I'm not the one getting. I'm usually not the one get, getting the praise. I'm usually the one giving the praise. Right. And like that, that works for me. Mm-hmm. But I think you're right. There, I think it's a balance. I think you can prepare yourself as much as you can, but you really have to be, there's some people that are not very risk prone and there's other people that are like us that are willing to, I know I'm confident enough. And maybe it's like, I'm kind of blindly confident. Yeah. It's like a dangerous confidence. Yeah. Sometimes. yeah. And I'm okay, but I'm okay with the, I think as long as you are comfortable with the consequences, then take the risk. Yeah. Because, like I said, I feel like I really don't have that much to lose. Right. Maybe like, more now. <laughs> yeah, yeah but now. even then, I, I'll be able to. Yeah, I'll, you're gonna. I'm you'll get a job. That you'll, I'll figure yeah. it out. I, I always do. make the joke that when if shit hits the fan, I'll get a job at Wendy's. Yeah. You know Dude, what I mean? I mean I, if I'm, if I, I need to. Thing. I'm not above doing anything. Like the HEB is my backup plan. Yeah, if I mean, everything actually, goes and the, no 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 dice to anybody that or no shade to anybody that works there, it's a good job. It is a good job. I it's like if everything all else fails, I'll I'll just move up the ranks at HEB and I'll have a happy life. That's the thing. I I am, uh, for example, I have a cousin, very great guy, love him to death. Um, he got a divorce and then lost his job. I think he was probably making like three hundred thousand dollars a year as like a construction consultant. Mm-hmm. Like I don't know something that I don't understand. Right. Um, but I mean, I know he has like a master's, and I know he was like doing well in life and like a big life move life change and he has been like out of work for like a year or something and he's like you know i gotta find this like new big job and he's like interviewing all these big companies and i know that he's trying to find this like other job this other big job that's like filling the void of that other giant job yeah that's like not i could not live that lifestyle i could not be like i'm just sitting here waiting for someone to give me a couple friends like that perfect thing like i just my my brain doesn't work like that i'm like well First of all, I need to be doing something. I need to be busy. I need to feel like I'm like, Or if you wanted that big giant thing, you'd be like, okay, well, let's start chipping away from the bottom. What's totally. the first thing we need yes. to do? Okay, so I need, sorry, I need this certification. Sorry. And yes. so I need to go to get this class. I'm going to go yeah. knock out or this like, class. What am I going to do in the meantime to just get through daily life or in order to it, work yeah. towards it? And then maybe another opportunity will come. Like, so I'm just I'm very risk prone. I don't have a lot to lose. If I had a bunch of money and like a bunch of nice shit and a bunch of other people that are like, mm-hmm. you know, I I also think it's probably a little privileged of me to say that. I mean, I'm not. My family does not have a lot of money, but I know that I have enough resources around me that like Friends, if I'm like yeah. in a really desperate spot, someone's gonna take care of me. But right. I also take care of other people. Right. It's a give and get. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I I think that I can't really fathom a world where I'm like destitute or you know right. like i but just because like my brain doesn't ever go there it's like it'll always work out yeah you, i am kind if of you're, like I, I kind of have that same weird like yeah. it'll work out like even when like we moved yeah. here and like shit was rocky yeah. and i didn't yeah. have a, a lot of money coming in and i was burning i'm burning up my savings i'm like you know what it'll work out we're gonna well you appreciate it more when it does work out too right like because it will it work adds out to that, that grit yeah. of the food truck the yeah. story you yeah. know what i mean yeah i don't know i i I've never been like super faithful or anything, but I do kind of have like a, 
It's it's a two sided coin. Sometimes right. I'm like, I'm like, oh, uh, like prepare mentally prepare for the worst. Yeah. And then you'll always be okay. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I do kind of have this like over. Generally, I'm I believe that as long as I work hard and bust ass, nothing's stopping me. And really want it. You know what I really, mean? Yeah. And I mean, and sometimes there are limitations. Like sometimes the bank will not give you money. Right. Yeah. You know? And sometimes, sometimes the answer is no. you can't raise $5 million. Dollars, and sometimes. Nope. Yeah. And sometimes. <laughs> and I've been told no now. Yeah. And I know what that feels like. And that is very frustrating. But it does kind of make you want to go back to the drawing board. Okay. How can we make the business plan more attractive? Also, how can we, what can we. it just makes me appreciate it so much. Yeah. In the same way that I do have friends that do have dads that have like, can give them $5 million and they do hope in businesses and they've had it easy. I don't know right. if they appreciate it as much as me. They don't love, maybe love it the same. It's exactly. just not the same love. Yeah. But it seems like I guess the point that I was trying to make is like if you're unhappy with where you are, right? That is like but you're not willing to take a risk to get to you're a place that is unhappy. happier. You know, so I have a lot of have a couple friends that are, you know, they have all these these excuses, things that they put out, and I some and shit. some of them are good. Like you know, they're but but like one of them, you know, it's like oh, I'm in a lot of debt or whatever, and it's like me too because I chose this path, me and too. so you know what I mean. But it's like you know what, worst case scenario, again, I'll file bankruptcy if I need to, get a job at H E B. You know, we're doing yep. good now, yep. we're paying stuff off, everything's good. Yep. But I I didn't let that that wasn't even in the conversation when it came to yeah am i gonna move here and like follow my dreams type stuff yeah. right and so it's like the the risk was always going to be taken and that's just the way that i'm wired and i get that people are wired differently but it's like if you're if you're unhappy about the path that you took you know you do change i it. think that you need to take risks to change it and i don't think you're ever gonna be at a place where you feel like you're ready like oh totally. I I'm totally ready now to mm-hmm. take this leap. Yeah. Whether it's signing yeah. the lease on the brick and mortar totally. or whatever, you guys aren't ready for that. Everything. everything Nobody's we ready do, for everything, that. Everything you can a, prepare. Any big change is scary, and like right. that's kind of part of it, and that's part of the the fun of doing things for me. I agree with you. If you're unhappy, no one else is gonna fucking make you happy. Like well, I feel like the, if and, I learned anything yeah. in the in my life, I'm pretty self reliant. Right. I'm like pretty independent in the fact that like if I what has worked for me is like me doing it myself mm-hmm. and that has gone a long way for me I also feel like some people that's not what they need to do because that's just they're not like you and me yeah but I certainly am not fans of hearing people complain just for the sake of complaining because yeah. there are also there's also people that are just like I'm stuck in this pit of de- doom and I love to complain about it. And yeah. But here's five <clears> things <throat> I could do to make it easier on myself or I could take a risk. Well, but no, I don't want to. That's always me, right? So when my friends are like, even my girlfriend sometimes, it's like, you know, it's that thing you always hear that like men, like when, you're, what, when your woman comes to you with a problem, don't offer, just listen, don't offer. Because yeah, so, yeah. like I'm a solution. So, oh, okay. Well, you're feeling, you hate your job and you hate everything about where you live and you just got your girlfriend broke up with you. Cool. Move to a different place. Get a job here. Like I'll me give too. you seven. I know 20 people that are high you know what i mean like and then they don't want to hear the solution they'd rather kind of revel in the yeah you know and i, don't, I mean I, don't know. It's weird. I i think we all we you and i because mm-hmm. we are the way we are and i obviously we're very similar in some ways have to just know that we are different than a lot it's of true. people it's just hard when somebody comes you know if someone you care about is like and yeah. it's like it seems to me in the way that i'm programmed and wired and then looking at your situation through th- yeah. from third person yeah. it's like you need to take some risk and just just kind of totally. stir shit up you yeah. know what i mean Maybe just just, just stir some shit up Maybe just quit your fucking job risk. and get a different job yeah or you know pivot yeah. or move to a different place totally. or or just just do something crazy and then you never know what'll happen but but you're if you just kind of get stuck in the same old rigmarole and it's not you're not going to make any changes you know what i mean i guess that's kind of obvious one but of the that's just something that, that's been no, on my mind heavy. totally and it, it's very relevant to what i experience on a regular basis also like we have employees that have been with us for a long time and sometimes i have to take them aside and say hey i love you i love you first like i love i love you as a person first not as an employee and if you are unhappy Go find something that's going to make you happy Mm -hmm. because you being here and being unhappy, it's not good for me. It's not good for you. It's not good for anyone. Right. Yeah. So go find, do something, make a change. Yeah. And sometimes that's worked for them. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's just like a good sobering, like, oh shit, people are paying attention to the fact that I'm just complaining. Or I'm heard. 
It yeah. could be as simple yeah. as whatever. Or like, what can we do? Let's put together a strategy to make you happy. Right. Or like, instead of focusing on the things that make you unhappy every day, like, I have I have team like team members that are just very honest about the fact that they tend to be unhappy people, but mm-hmm. they find joy in little things. And I'm right. like, okay, well let's try to create your schedule maybe you need to go disc golfing a little bit more sure or like what do you like to do within the job that you can do more of? right right or like what can we do to make you happier that's mm-hmm. like you know let's let's work together to, to write to try to make your life better because like the the service industry specifically is so notorious for people just like complaining for the sake of doing it <coughs> right and it's like it gets to my it gets under my skin because mm-hmm. i'm a solution oriented right. person too and it's also hard with barbecue i feel like to hire and i was thinking about this yeah. recently because it's one of those things where it's like one of the only food it's one of the few food things where like the majority of people i feel like applying are like i'm gonna be somebody someday <laughs> in barbecue right Maybe, like nobody yeah. just wants to like do Do the the dishes or like fucking serve the food and and just do that indefinitely like it's kind of just like i want to like i'm working at Leroy and lewis so that i can open up taylor's barbecue yeah you know what i mean like Mm -hmm. and it's like that's a weird thing with with the industry but so there it barbecue has a lot of those dreamers in it it has a lot of dreamers in it but i love them i love that too i love that and like if i can give them an opportunity to because i mean we can't pay people a shitload of money just because right. we're a small business, yeah. we're paying them literally everything. There is can. a ceiling to yeah, small business I mean, working we're not for small business, living like in the lap of luxury either. But you know, if we can, what we can offer them is experience. Yeah, we can offer them right what we've done wrong. We can offer them a opportunity to come and like get messy on someone else's dime. <laughs> right. You know? So yeah. like. If we can do that, then that that goes a long way too. Absolutely, Sawyer. It's all about the people. Yeah. Well, you um, put good energy out, and you get it back. And you take care. If you take care of good people, I feel like it comes around full circle. I've just been doing whatever I can to help help good people around me. Just kind of the energy. Keep doing it. The energy, I can feel it. I mean, you're putting out great energy. Also, I there's good energy in this room. This uh, room has a weird energy about it now that we now that we've had a lot of a handful. We've done about 25 podcasts in here now it's it's we've only ever had good times and good combos at this table yeah. and so it's it's there's a inner something happens when, when we come in here i like it well and i, mean, I really obviously appreciate you bring a lot of that so well, you should be very i think the people proud I, of I think yourself. the people i bring in here bring in a lot of that too i pick well, good people like you yeah oh well thanks well i'll i'll come back yeah. after we've uh succeeded or failed oh we you know, will we'll have we, a follow-up combo we about only succeed the next phase of my life <laughs> yes exactly yeah. we'll talk about your job at wendy's <laughs> yes at yeah, H-E-B yeah, H-E-B. And... oh shit <laughs> no i'm gonna move across the country yeah you're if gonna we fail I'm the out embarrassment's again. too much no I'm yeah no ma- yes and also just like <laughs> i'll just take the opportunity to go and like explore a new yes. place yes backpacking mm, no maybe. maybe i do like a little Clamping. bit of that. yeah <laughs> yeah i'm 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 uh a little bit of both. Right on. But yeah. Well, well Sawyer, me. absolutely. Um, look into this camera right here and just kind of let people know where to find your yeah. uh, stuff. So currently we are parked at uh, 121 Pickle Road, which is at Cosmic Coffee. Mm-hmm. And then our new spot will be opening in February at 5621 Emerald Forest. Which new is, menu items, new fun yeah, stuff. So much fun, fun shit. Stuff. Come explore with When us are we opening? Day. Hopefully February 1st. Ooh, wee! That's soon. So, yeah. Let's go. It is, yeah. Sweet. Thank you so much, Sawyer. I appreciate yeah. it. Let's Thanks run the outro, brother. Us.